Guy walks into a sperm donor bank wearing a ski mask and holding a weapon. He goes up to the nurse and demands her to open up the sperm bank vault. She says, but sir, this is a sperm bank. I don't care, open it now, he says. So she opens the door to the vault and inside are all the sperm samples. The guy says, take out one of the sperm samples and drink it. She looks at him, but they're sperm samples. Do it. So the nurse sucks it back. That one there, drink that one too. So the nurse drinks that one as well. Finally, after four samples, the man takes off the ski mask and says, See, honey, it's not that hard. One day, Jane met Tarzan in the jungle. She was very attracted to him, and during her questions about his life, she asked him about how he managed for sex. What is sex, he asked. Well, she explained to him what sex was, and he said, Oh, Tarzan used hole in trunk of tree. Horrified, she said, Tarzan, you have it all wrong. I'll show you how to do it properly. So she took off her clothes, laid down on the ground, and said, Here, you must put it in here. Well, Tarzan removed his loincloth, stepped closer, then gave her an almighty kick right in the crotch. Well, Jane rolled around in agony. Eventually, when she managed to catch her breath, she said, What the hell did you do that for? Tarzan always checked for bees first. The man goes to church and tells the priest, Father, I almost cheated on my wife. The priest asks him, how do you almost cheat on your wife? The man says, well, me and another woman were naked, but we just rubbed against each other. The priest looked at him, disgusted, and said rubbing is the same as putting it in. Never do that again. I'll say five Hail Marys and put a hundred dollars in the donation pan. The next time the priest sees the man, he is infuriated. He said, you didn't put a hundred dollars in the pan like I told you. The man looks at the priest, disgusted, and says... I rub the money against the pan, and rubbing is the same as putting it in. A guy goes out one day hunting for bear. After a few hours in the forest, he finally sees a giant grizzly. Well, he gets the bear in the rifle's sight and is about to pull the trigger when he feels a tap on his shoulder. It's another bear. Buddy, the bear says, that's my best friend down there. I can rip your head off right now, or we can have sex. What's it going to be? Well, fearing for his life, the hunter says, of course, Mr. Bear, let's have sex. The next day, hungry for revenge, the hunter returns to the woods and sees the same bear. Soon as he lines up his shot, he feels a tap on his shoulder. Buddy, says the bear, once again, either I can rip your head off or we can have sex. While still fearing for his life, the hunter says, okay, let's go, Mr. Bear. The next day, furious as to what happened to him, the hunter returns to the forest in order to kill that same bear. Once again, he gets the bear in his rifle sights and he feels an old, familiar tap on his shoulder. The bear just shakes his head, looks at the hunter, and says, You don't come here for the hunting, do you, buddy? Dave walks into the bar and sees his friend Paul slumped over the bar. Well, he walks up and says, What's wrong, buddy? Well, replies Paul, You know that beautiful girl at work that I always wanted to ask out, but I get an erection every time I saw her? Well, yeah, he says with a laugh. Well... I finally plucked up the courage to ask her out, and she agreed. Well, that's great, said Dave. When are you going out? Well, I went to meet her this evening. I uh, was worried I'd get an erection again, so I got some duct tape and taped my penis to my leg so it wouldn't show. Well, that's sensible, says Dave. So I get to her door. I ring the doorbell. She answers in the sheerest, tiniest, sexiest dress you ever saw. Well, what happened then? Paul slumps back over the bar again. I kicked her in the face. The doctor told a guy that masturbating before sex often helped men last longer during the act. Well, the man decided, what the hell, I'll give it a try. He spent the rest of the day thinking about where to do it. Couldn't do it in the office. He thought about the restroom, but it was too open. He considered an alley, but figured that was too unsafe. Finally, he figured out a solution. On his way home, he pulled his truck over on the side of the highway. He got out and crawled underneath as if he was examining the truck. Satisfied with the privacy, he undid his pants and started to go at it. He closed his eyes and thought of his lover, and as he grew closer to the big finish, he felt a quick tug at the bottom of his pants. Not wanting to lose his mental fantasy, he kept his eyes shut and replied, What do you want? He heard... This is the police. What's going on down there? 
the man replied. I'm just checking out the rear axle. It's busted. Well, you might want to check your brakes, too. While you're down there, your truck rolled down the hill about five minutes ago. A male patient is laying in bed in the hospital wearing an oxygen mask over his mouth and nose, still heavily sedated from a difficult surgery. A young student nurse appears to give him a partial sponge bath. Nurse, he mumbles from behind the mask, are my testicles black? Embarrassed, the young nurse replies, I don't know, sir. I'm only here to wash your upper body and your feet. He struggles to ask again, Nurse, are my testicles black? Concerned that he may elevate his vitals from worry about his testicles, she overcomes her embarrassment and pulls back the covers. She raises the gown and holds his penis in one hand and his testicles in the other. She takes a close look and says, There's nothing wrong with them, sir. The man pulls off his oxygen mask, smiles at her, and says very slowly, Thank you very much. That was wonderful. But listen very closely. Are my test results back? The man joins the Navy and is shipped out immediately to an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Pacific. Well, a captain is showing around his new recruit, and the recruit asks the captain what the sailors do to satisfy their urges when they're at sea for so long. Well, let me show you, says the captain. He takes the recruit down to the rear of the ship where there's a solitary barrel with a hole in it. This will be the best sex you ever have. Go ahead and try it. I'll give you a little privacy. The recruit doesn't quite believe it, but he decides to try it anyways. Well, after he finishes up, the captain returns. Wow, that was the best sex I'd ever had. I want to do that every day. Fine, you can do it every day except Thursday. Why not Thursday? Well, that's your day in the barrel. A man boarded an airplane and took his seat. As he settled in, he glanced up and saw the most beautiful woman boarding the plane. Soon, he realized she was heading straight towards his seat. As fate would have it, she took the seat right beside his. While eager to strike up a conversation, he blurted out, uh, Business trip or pleasure? She turned, smiled, and said, Business. I'm going to the annual Nymphomaniacs of America convention in Boston. Well, he swallowed hard. Here was the most gorgeous woman he'd ever seen sitting next to him, and she was going to a meeting of nymphomaniacs. Struggling to maintain his composure, he asked, What is your business role at the convention? Well, I'm a lecturer, she said. I use the information that I've learned from my personal experiences to debunk some of the popular myths about sexuality. Really, he said, and what kind of myths are there? Well, she said, one popular myth is that African-American men are the most well-endowed, when in fact it's Native American Indian who is most likely to possess that trait. Another popular myth is that Frenchmen are the best lovers, when actually it is men of Jewish descent who are the best. I also discovered that lovers with the best stamina are from the southern states of America. Suddenly, the woman became a little uncomfortable and blushed, I'm sorry, I really shouldn't be discussing all this with you. I don't even know your name. Tonto, the man said. Tonto Goldstein. But my friends call me Bubba. Dave works hard at the plant and spends most evenings bowling or playing basketball at the gym. His wife thinks that he's pushing himself a little too hard, so for his birthday, she takes him to the local strip club. Well, the doorman at the club greets him and says, Hey, Dave, how you doing? His wife is a little puzzled and asks if he's ever been to the club before. Oh, no, he's on my bowling team. Then, when they're seated, a waitress asks Dave if he'd like his usual Budweiser. The wife is becoming uncomfortable and says, You must come here a lot for that woman to know your drink, Budweiser. No, honey, she's in the ladies' bowling league. We share lanes with them. Well, a stripper comes over to the table and throws her arms around Dave. Hey, Davey, she says. Want your usual table dance? Dave's wife, now furious, grabs her purse and storms out of the club. Dave follows and spots her getting into a cab. Before she can slam the door, he jumps in beside her and she starts screaming at him. The cabbie turns his head and says, Looks like you picked up a real bitch tonight, Dave.